I think it's fair to mention it right away so that we don't waste anyone's time, right? This video is for people who want to start a YouTube channel but are still hesitant, people who heard a bazillion times that you need a niche on YouTube and still don't have it, people who started a YouTube channel didn't see the success they wanted to see and are thinking about giving up and um, my friends and family because I've made a bunch of mistakes that led to now almost only my friends and family watching my videos. If this doesn't sound like you, totally fine. YouTube thinks you will like all these videos here but if you recognize yourself in the description Welcome. By the way, hi, my name is Luminitsa. At the moment, I have 4.6k subscribers and uh, it has been quite a journey. From time to time, I'll look at my YouTube studio because uh, this is the perfect timeline of my life in the past four years. I posted my first YouTube video on April 6, 2020. I have two fun facts here. <laughs> the very first video published on YouTube by me was, I think, in 2007. It was the very early, very early times of YouTube that I discovered Kaita Klep. It was and still is a very big Russian blogger. I didn't think too much about it. We had a camera at home, so I started filming. I started the channel. I moved to a new school. Two most popular guys in my class found out about my channel and they started to make fun of me and I deleted everything. I went home crying and I deleted everything. I deleted all the videos, but whatever. So ever since 11, I was regretting deleting my YouTube channel. The second fun fact, video number zero, number one on this channel was never published because I was so embarrassed. Although all these years passed, I could almost hear the voices of those guys. But the next day I woke up and I was very determined to start a channel either way. I filmed the first video. It doesn't have a microphone. It will speak about speaking. It's not even on my camera. But for me, it was important to just publish it. So people who are thinking about starting a YouTube channel but are still hesitant, believe me, the moment of pressing the uh, record button is the toughest one and clicking on publish. These two moments will change your life into before and after. The simple act of wanting something, being interested in something and taking a specific action towards it and proving yourself that you can and proving yourself that you're not afraid and proving yourself that although you were anxious you did it either way these are the moments that will change you and if right now you're thinking okay i got into the energy i want i want to publish i want to do something but I don't know what about, I don't have a channel yet, I don't have a niche yet, so I need to sit down and think about a content strategy before I start doing a YouTube channel because it's about consistency. Stop it. Really? Stop it. Maybe it's surprising to someone, but your first video almost doesn't matter. Really, the first video is there for you to conquer this fear and anxiety of publishing. That's the only goal of this video. Gently moving into the next topic, the niche. It is something that you hear about everywhere. Everyone tells you that you need a niche. It's not completely wrong. Having a niche just helps people understand what to expect from you. So niching is important, but I think it only makes sense to think about it in advance and plan it in advance if you are an expert. Otherwise, if your channel is supposed to be about you and a niche didn't pop up in your head right away, don't overthink it. Your niche will appear with the time. For example, as I was saying, my very first video was about public speaking versus storytelling. And then I went more and more into public speaking tips and then presentation tips. I realized that I'm curious about communication. So I went into the communication videos. The content was shaped 
by my interests. And my interests were changing. No way I would have thought I would make a lot of videos about dating tips for men back in 2020 when I started my YouTube channel. We arrived at March 24th, 2021, when I published for me quite a viral video, Eight Signs She Likes You. Almost instantly, I got a lot of views, which was so motivating for me because it felt like, oh my God, now I finally cracked the algorithm. Now I finally found the niche, the topic, and I was so excited until I realized that somehow I was put in this box of signs she likes you, and every time I would do something else, those videos were severely underperforming. Although I was starting to have, it, to have success, filming started to become less and less Fun. It felt to me at the time like I was punished for not doing what the algorithm wanted me to do. Moving into the third part and welcome people that have a channel and are thinking about giving up. Uh, welcome to the club. I published the last video about dating in August and I took a break to understand what I want to do next. I re reached my goal of getting subscribers and being monetized. but I never reached a goal that was in my subconscious. I realized what it was three days ago, and it's 2024 now. We're in 2021 on the timeline. I came back November 30th, 2021 with a completely different video. To be honest, I think at the time I hoped that the audience that was created was there for me, not specifically for the topic, but I was wrong. and. It was not their fault. Assuming that people were there because of me, although I was sharing nothing about my life, was quite arrogant. This is when I gave up on the channel. I stopped publishing. In those months between December 2021 and April 2022, I had the same feeling that I had when I was 11 and I deleted my YouTube channel. I came back with a video of Science She Likes You. It performed so much better. I did a second video. The difference in views was incredible. It's tough. And I think if you're watching this video at this part right now, you know exactly how I felt. It was 2023, I was in Brazil, super unplanned. I just took my camera, turned it on, I was like, you know what, this is something that I know brings me comfort. So I filmed the video about my engagement. It was not specifically about me breaking engagement, it was more about this tough breakup. I still think I didn't do this the best way, and making a video would help someone else to not make my mistakes. Everything was so different. So um, I gave up on my YouTube channel once again. I don't know, it's a toxic relationship. <laughs> it's, it's a karmic thing. If it's in the stars, I have no idea. But for whatever reason, I keep coming back to this channel. I think this video is all the mistakes you can make. In October, I published video again. If you're thinking about giving up, maybe you should. <laughs> it's like in that song, only know you love her when you let her go. And you let her go. Maybe you'll understand in the meantime that that's not for you. If you feel like something was left unsaid and you come back, then probably there is something out there that you need to say. Moving into the last part there are a few people who are subscribed to me back in the days and they are still interested in what i'm saying now so they're watching which i'm so enormously grateful for thank you so so much you are incredible people and remember i was telling you that i felt like i didn't achieve a goal that i was not aware of it was just somewhere in my subconscious and I realized it three days ago. No matter if you didn't start your channel yet, if you just started it, if you are started but you want to give up, my piece of advice that I would have given myself, when you press the record button, it's not about your niche. It's not about the time when you're publishing. 
it's not about the day it's really not about it all it's about staying true to yourself what you like and and that was the missing piece what message do you want to bring what is the end goal of this video of your channel of you being on YouTube this is what motivated my past few videos this is what made me film this very long video now I'm doing things I know I will regret not trying and I documented because I know there are many people out there who feel like they're stuck feel like they're having an okayish life but not a great life people who want more people who dream of more and it's a comfort zone because if you're really in a bad situation people get out of that but when you're in that sweet sweet spot of okay life it's difficult to make the next step or a leap because you're afraid that you will lose whatever you were so hardly working for and i truly hope that with my example they will feel like they're not alone. Get into that feeling of being anxious, but doing it anyways, and then getting onto this other side of happiness and excitement and feeling like you are the most powerful person in the world. This being said, I think it's getting a little bit emotional, so thank you again for watching. If you want to support my little journey, I would appreciate if you could subscribe to this channel. If that's something you don't resonate with, that's totally fine. At this point, after four years, I get it. It's okay. And see you next time. Bye-bye.